I'm David Aaron Decker, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to build your very own 80cc petrol engine two stroke motorised bicycle, just like this one right here. So stay tuned, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. Okay, before we start, I would like to go through a few fundamentals with you to help you understand the reasons why I've chosen this particular frame for this project. Reason number one, I've selected a mountain bike with no back suspension as this would cause a problem fitting the engine block onto the frame as the cylinder would hit the suspension spring on the back of the frame. Reason number two, you will need to have a clearance space of about 21 inches on the top bar of the frame and 16 inches on the down bar of the frame. Also, having a bike with front suspension will help for handling and you will not be able to use a disc brake on the back as the drive chain cog will hit when installed. To install the heavy duty universal mount, you should first remove the two engine studs that are already pre-installed onto your engine. I found that using a pair of pliers is the easiest way of removing these. Once removed, place the mounting plate and install using two of the 10mm mounting nuts along with two washers and two spring washers. Then tighten with a 10mm spanner or ratchet spanner. But remember, do not over tighten these bolts. Now that you're ready to fit the engine onto the frame, make sure that it sits nice and snug onto the frame so as when it's running it will be stable and solid. Then fix into place using the mounting bracket and secure using the two 10mm nuts plus two washers and two spring washers and tighten using our 10mm spanner or ratchet spanner. Using the universal U-mount bracket, fix into place using two 10mm nuts, two washers and two spring washers. Then fix into place using a 10mm spanner or ratchet spanner. When installing the exhaust or muffler, it's pretty straightforward. Start by threading two 10mm nuts plus two washers and two spring washers, but only do up finger tight as you want to make sure that there is enough gap between the pedals so as it don't hit the exhaust. Installing the CDI unit is easy, but very important that you take the metal nipple off the spark plug first to secure a better spark, then fix it into place using the spark plug tool and a screwdriver. Now for the CDI unit. Place the CDI onto a part of the frame where the lead can reach the spark plug and fix it into place using the mount bracket in the screws. But as my down bar is too thick, I'll be using a cable tie to fix this into place. When installing the carburetor, unscrew the top and take out the large spring plus the jet needle, also the sea washer and the plunger. The 
next step is to place the jet needle through the plunger along with the seal washer. Thread the throttle cable through the carburetor top and place the large spring on. Next, push the throttle cable into the groove along the plunger and line it up straight with the seal washer, then screw the top back onto the carburetor. The next step is to slide the carburetor down onto the tube and make sure that you tighten up using a Phillips screwdriver to secure into place. To install the throttle assembly, first start off by loosening the brake and gear shifter with an allen key and then cut off the original handlebar grip with a sharp knife. Then thread the cable stay through the kill switch housing and thread the throttle cable nipple through the hole into the twist grip. Place the throttle assembly back onto the handlebar and tighten up using a Phillips screwdriver. After this is done, place your brake and gear shifter back and tighten up using an Allen key. To install the clutch assembly, first start off by loosening the brake and gear shifter with an allen key, then cut off the original handlebar grip with a sharp knife. Loosen the clutch nut and bolt on the handlebar grip with an allen key and slide it onto the tube and then re-tighten with an allen key. For this next step, push the brand new handlebar grip into place and then thread the large nipple of the clutch cable into the clutch lever. After this is done, place your brake and gear shifter back and re-tighten back up using an allen key. Push the large clutch spring over the end of the cable and then push it through the first enclosure hole on the engine. Then place the smaller clutch spring on the cable and then push it through the second enclosure. Then tighten up using a Phillips screwdriver to secure into place. To install the rear sprocket, first start off by taking off your back wheel by using a 15mm spanner or ratchet spanner. Then take one of the rubber mounting grommets and cut a line in between the two holes. Next, place the cut grommet in between the spokes on the back wheel and mount the cog aligning all the 10mm nuts and bolts and washers.
Begin to tighten the nuts using two 10mm spanners or ratchet spanners, making sure that you tighten them evenly as the plates will move if you're not careful. To install the drivetrain, first you need to take off the joining link. Once this is apart, drive fit the chain onto the bike and measure how many links you need to shorten it by. Yo, I ain't here for the money, I ain't here for the fame. So it might be nice to there are many methods to shorten the chain, but I prefer to use an angle grinder. As the excess links are cut off, refit the new size chain and reassemble using the joining link. Installing the chain adjuster is kind of tricky, but the best way to do it is to make sure that you do up the 14mm nuts and bolts evenly as this will move. After this is done, you can move the adjusting wheel into the right position to take out the slack from the drive chain. To install the petrol tank or gas tank is pretty straightforward. First, start by lining up and dry fit in the tank. Then by using one of the mounting brackets, I have decided to bend it into place and then tighten it up using an 8mm spanner. To install the fuel filter, measure the hose to length, then cut with a sharp knife and then push the hose onto the filter. Then cut the hose and push onto the tank. To install the wiring, make sure that you connect the blue wire from the magneto to the blue wire onto the CDI unit, then connect the red wire to both blue wires. Then connect the black wire from the magneto to the black wire on the CDI unit and the last black wire from the kill switch. To install the chain guard, first dry fit and mark how much it needs to be shortened by. Then I decided to use a bench sander to shorten my guard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
After I was happy with the length, I dry fitted it up against the bike to see where I had to mark and drill the back hole for the rear mounting. When I drilled the hole, I secured using a 10mm nut locking washer on the front and a cable tie on the back. 